Hello everybody and welcome back to Survival. This is the nether hub we're in and I just thought we would get going on the new project that I alluded to, or not the new project, the old project redone. So this is the blaze, we're going to the blaze farm. Uh, I just kind of dug a quick tunnel to get to it so I'll obviously make it look a bit better later. But yeah let's just go down to it. So this was a fortress that I found, there's, I think that's a different fortress, no that's the same fortress. There's like two fortresses close together and I'd I actually forgotten I'd been to this one, um, but I have. And of course we don't need a double spawner for this, just a single one, as you can see. And hopefully this will work a lot better than the last one. So the aim is to get an AFK blaze farm working quite efficiently. Oh yeah, apparently uh, weathers can spawn even down here because as you can see the main flooring is up there and we're halfway down on a pillar. But apparently weathers can spawn down here too because I came down the other day and there was like six or something. One feature I didn't have with the old uh, the old farm, the double spawner, was the whole uh, lighting shut off system. So we got that going here, although it doesn't actually work as you can see because that guy spawned. I think they need to be... Oh, I mean, I think I've put them in the wrong places. That's that's annoying. I'll probably have to redo it. There's a couple of guys down there, which is kind of funny. All right, so as you can tell, it appears that the lighting system does not work. And the reason for that is because the... I've I actually made this uh, spawning chamber bigger than uh, the st uh, it should be. And because of that, the light levels do not like reach the sides and on one of these sides or two of these sides actually so I think it's this side and yeah this side over here it should be this side and this side the uh, blaze are gonna keep spawning so I'll probably get rid of all this just because there's no point in having it alright so we're gonna give this a go um, we just need to try and remember what it was like uh, what the setup was like at the other place. Uh, so basically what we're going to have is all the blaze funneling into here and we don't want them to travel, we want to cut the travel distance, that's the aim here because there was two, the travel distance in the last one was too far, particularly with the minecarts. We won't have any minecarts here so they'll just be falling, they'll get filtered here and they'll fall here, here. and that's uh, that's fine. Alright, so there's the first bit. Uh, we're not going to do the redstone just yet. The redstone did get quite messy in the in the last place as well. But as you can see, the blaze will fall down here. And then after a certain amount have landed on this, uh, this will activate this piston, which will push them this way. And that will deactivate this piston, which will open a way for them to fall. And then they'll just fall down here. And that will be into the killing chamber. So that's that bit done. Alright, it's good we figured this out um, now. As you can see, the spawner's not working and I was planning on standing down here. But uh, but yeah, that doesn't seem to work. Okay, so I've just realised this is going to be possibly as difficult, if not more difficult, than it was to wire the last one. Because in the last one we had the advantage of space and we had the advantage of height. Um, and by height I mean obviously we were higher up so it was easy to um, you know we were next to the blaze spawner so they would spawn anyway we could we could decide where we were going to stand because the minecarts were going to bring them there but this time we don't have that um, it's not as easy as it first seemed but we're gonna give it a go anyway okay so this is coming along um, rather unorthodoxly but whatever as you can see we have a wire running around the track. It is literally the only way I could do it. We need to connect this piston and this piston. And we can't run the wire here because this will get affected by this repeated up here. And what these two pistons are doing... Oh, you know what? I've not done it right. Oh, we need to invert this one. But no, the point is, what these pistons are doing, is, they're the gates for the uh, the place where the blaze will collect. This one will be extended and this one will be retracted by default and then this one will push the player here and this one will open. 
so they don't suffocate. But this needs to be, by default, this needs to be inverted. So I'm glad we spotted that now. Alright, so we've implemented the Irish Norlatch, I think. I think this is how it's going to work. Um, we just now need to invert this signal here, like so. And then we'll need to add our repeater to this side in order to kind of balance it out. Like that. Alright, that should be fine. Oh dear, that's not good. That piston has glitched out. There we go. Oh, okay, there's one up there. We're just waiting for them to funnel down. Unfortunately, it does take time. Okay, that's good. Uh, and it doesn't matter that that other guy got squashed because that won't happen in the real thing. But yeah, we did it. So, at least that's working. That's a start. Uh, we obviously now need to figure out a way to uh, reset the RS Norlatch here. Um, but the next stage is to activate the crusher and then toss a pot on the player because obviously, as I said and as I keep saying, the player will be AFK but the right mouse button will be held down and what that will do is throw the potion when it gets dropped on the player. This is definitely a dropper, yeah, okay. <laughs> if it was a dispenser I'd be dead in a couple of passes. So the wire branches off, goes towards the gates and then goes towards the crusher and the crusher is activated when this repeater is activated it's on a four tick delay and then this one's on a four tick delay and that's just to give the blaze enough time to move into position and then that will then activate another iris snow latch which will activate the uh, crusher okay so this might not work uh, well it should work I, it, sh it just might take me a wee bit to get it going uh, but what I'm trying to do here is use the hopper clock to turn off the RS Norlatch. Uh, so the hopper clock will be activated when the uh, iron pressure... When, when the crusher is activated, this will be activated. And it will be counting down uh, the time it takes to crush the blaze down to becoming a one hit. And then, yeah, then it will deactivate the RS Norlatch or switch the state of the RS Norlatch. And that will prevent the piston from killing the blaze. That's the aim. Whether it will work or not is another matter. And then hopefully we can get this same wire activating the dropper. Uh, it seems fairly simple, but at the same time, there's bound to be a catch somewhere down the line. Um, like, for example, uh, if I see if I, I don't know which side to put the wire at just now, but even if I put it at this side, it's going to switch the state of the Irish Norlatch anyway. Uh, I might head, uh, I think it's like 20, is it 24 items? I can never remember. Anyway, we'll just go for 24 at the minute. Okay, yeah, so I made a big mistake. I couldn't work out why this crusher didn't seem to be working. And I figured it was because this is not correctly linked up. It should be like that. It wasn't, like, it wasn't powering this block to uh, extinguish the torch. It has to be like that. So I, just a bit of redstone I missed. Uh, but it should work now. Let's see. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now we just need to figure out how many items we need to uh, take the blaze down to a one hit or low health. Okay, so there's a few things, a few design faults that I learnt uh, about this. I think the first one is... Oh. Uh oh that's not good. I'm stuck in my own trap. <laughs> okay. The first design vault is the pressure plate here, uh, I think, sends bud power. I could be wrong. But I think it's interfering with this piston here. Um, keeping it extended for longer than it should at times. Um, I can't really demonstrate that all that well. Uh, but that's one thing. The other thing is this uh, iron pressure plate is affecting this piston here, the crusher. So think think about the scenario where this chamber is filled up with the maximum amount of mobs, except for one, and then two come down. One touches 
the pressure plate first and the other one is just about to enter the chamber and then all the blades are pushed into here and the one that's still falling keeps falling and lands on the pressure plate. Uh, so the blaze up there will start getting crushed, the blaze down here will start getting crushed and this piston will only retract when the blaze up there, this single blaze up there dies because uh, the power is being sent from here, from that iron pressure plate through the block and into the piston keeping it extended which means some of these blaze may end up dying if not all of them and that would just break the farm and then obviously to solve that it would be very very simple all we would do is just move the farm down one but we can't do that because uh, if we move down any more we're not going to be able to activate the spawner this is what redstone is all about is just problem solving thinking things through is there a better way i could be doing this probably have i got a better way in my head probably eh, not really no <laughs> um uh, we could do it on a clock, but that would just have redstone going all the time. Uh, I, I don't really know what to do, to be honest. Uh, I've been at this project for so long, so much so that I'm actually starving now. So I have to go get something to eat for dinner while we continue to work on this. Uh, the problem itself is not a major... Well, it is a major problem, but it doesn't work. It doesn't happen every single time. It only happens if a blaze is falling in and... yeah. And then this one here isn't a major problem really either. It just delays the gate opening, which isn't exactly farm breaking. Uh, okay, so we're going to have to go for a new plan. Uh, I've done a bit of testing in creative mode. Uh, not on this world, obviously, on a, in another world. And I've actually discovered that we don't need these pistons, which is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, we can just drop them straight into here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to use a hopper mine cart and that's going to collect the blaze rods. Now, I was trying to w figure out why we needed the, you know, the originally we had the system where there was two pistons and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Two pistons, one would Oh, uh, one would retract, one would extend, and that would push the blaze from one part of the tubing into another. I was trying to work out why we needed that, and then I remembered that it was because of the collection system. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have a... Yeah, one of those right there. So we've got the hopper mine cart there. Let's just quickly get rid of this. And then what we need is a piston to push a block across uh, the minecart, like so. And if we chuck anything there, it's going to pick up the the item. What that's going to allow us to do is pass a signal through here. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. It's going to allow us to pass a signal through the block and collect the blaze rods at the same time. So it's basically two, two in one, which means we don't need this wiring over here, which I'm actually quite thrilled about. So this is the pressure, uh, the half slab, sorry, that the hopper minecart is above. If we do put that there, you can see that's, that uh, items can be passed through the half slab to a regular hopper below. And that is very convenient for this so overall i think if this works it'll be a lot better way uh, it'll be a much better way of doing it all right let's see if this works so far so good and darn it let's try to see see if this works again I still can't figure out what's what's going on. The thing is, that pressure plate up there should have no bearing whatsoever on this down here. 
Hmm. This is because yeah, because it's too far. It can't be blood powered, but power, right? Yeah, because blood power would be that one or that one. No, it would be that one or that one. Maybe it is that. I don't know. Nah, it's too far. It, it's definitely too far. What could be keeping the thing extended for longer than normal? I think what it is is the fact that if there's blaze standing on this pressure plate is going to send a pulse into the RS Norlatch which will keep it in a permanent state of being on and that's possibly why we had to move them uh, originally I wonder if there's a way we can get by this I really hope there is because I just cannot think of it oh man we've had to go back because I thought it was something else and I really don't want to have to revert back to what we had before. Okay, I am very sorry, uh, but I'm going to end the episode there. My reason for doing this is because I could be on this for another four hours and get nowhere, and then I would have a bunch of footage. I'd have like six or seven hours worth of footage that I'd have to condense into an episode. Uh, I think I'll work on it off camera. Uh, at least, I mean, it's a good example of the struggles one can have with with redstone in this game um so yeah i i'm going to keep i'm going to struggle on off camera next episode i will come back and show you if there has been any progress um but yeah big apologies i wasn't able to get the thing finished i i do have an idea but i don't want to risk trying to do it on camera and then it failing and then getting another idea and that feeling too. So I do have ideas, but whether they work or not is another matter. Uh, so yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Your viewing of this video is much appreciated. I will see you when I see you.